Good morning, Christos. Good morning. Thanks for coming. Uh, so let's start. Let's uh, start slowly. Uh, start by telling us about yourself, telling me, not us. I'm the interviewer. Uh, from the beginning of time and even before that, even family background and everything. Okay, so um, I was born in Athens. Um, the day I was born is uh, sort of remembered in Greece because it was the day after the war ended. Okay, so uh, uh, the civil war, because after uh, after the German occupation, uh, Greece had a four year four year long uh, civil war that was uh, like all civil wars were was very uh, cruel and exhausting and and, and murderous, uh, and it ended the way before I was born. The, and um, my parents uh, were uh, 40 and 50 at this time. Uh, my mother was 40, my father was 50. Their lives had been perturbed by the war. My mother was uh, the leader of a family. Uh, she had uh, six uh, uh, young, much younger siblings. Uh, my father was uh, in the beginning of the resistance and then uh, in the civil war. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, they, n they thought that uh, the war was ending, their lives was no, were not, were, were not uh, starting, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, they decided to have family, and that's, uh, that's how I came about. Uh, my father was a school teacher, so was my mother, but she never taught. Uh, I was her only pupil. Uh, 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 my father was a school teacher and was teaching in the mountains, in a, in a place very close to Delphi. Uh, 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 so, um, so when I was uh, two months old, uh, they took me there. Uh, right these days, that's uh, two hours drive from Athens. Then it was a whole day. Uh, you basically had three, four stops and so on. I mean, it was uh, uh, a slow bus uh, and terrible roads. Uh, so I grew up uh, in that village, uh, about a thousand people, uh, which was um, fantastic. I still, you know, it, it, uh, I, I think it has left a permanent uh, uh, stamp on me. Uh, I go there back. I go back there often. What's the name of the village? Lidoriki. Lidoriki. Um, and. Uh, then, uh, when uh, I was uh, five, we moved back to Athens. Uh, my father was transferred to, um, to Athens. Uh, he was, uh, he was a, like a union leader of the, of the school teachers. So he was elected union leader and had to go to Athens. Okay, so, so I... Um, uh, and uh, then I went to school in Athens. Uh, to elementary school. It was um, uh, it was uh, it was a not an easy time. Uh, I the main reason was that uh, uh, I had I had the mountain accent. Uh, as soon as I started speaking, uh, even my uncles, so you know, started laughing. Okay, you know, so. Um, it was, you know, it was, it was not, 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 not a nice, uh, not, not an easy feeling. Um, and uh, I, still to this day, I mean, you know, my mother was very educated, very cultured. She could have taken care of this in a month. I, I don't know, I don't know why she never, I think my mother was, uh, had uh, an emotional numbness because I um, mean, you know, she she lost both her parents when she was eleven, and she was left with uh, with uh, with six younger children to raise, uh, and uh, so she had. Uh, I mean, she was uh, the most dedicated mother I've seen, uh, uh, but uh, she was, uh, you know, she had, you know, I never seen her cry. Uh, uh, she, I think she, she was unable to. She had. Uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, that uh, that Israelis are familiar with this. I mean, she had a, a huge trauma with the war, um, and um, and her life. So um, uh, uh, 
I had to struggle with this. Uh, and uh, I believe, uh, if anything, this, uh, this pushed me to, uh, to study, to, uh, to be good, uh, uh, good in, uh, in school. Uh, in elementary school and the beginning of high school, I was, uh, I was considered weak in math. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, the reason is that I was impatient and I would make uh, silly uh, calculation mistakes. Uh, I wanted to finish first and, 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 uh, and go out and play. Uh, and uh, my, my, uh, my teachers were sincerely worried about me. That, uh, uh, my father was a mathematician uh, and uh, 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 he knew that I was good enough. Uh, and uh, every time uh, he went to school and, his, uh, and, and uh, the teachers who were his, he knew him, he was, he was their, their labor representative, I mean, or the, the, he was famous in, among teachers, told, told them about my con their concerns about me. Uh, uh, he would tell me and we would both smile. You know, so, uh, 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 I think I was very good in math all along, and uh, sort of I was thinking uh, ahead of my, of my, of my teachers. Uh, I, uh, uh, except I never, I never discussed mathematics with my dad. And the reason is that uh, I think it was very important to both of us, and uh, we didn't want to spoil it. Uh, Probably, probably we tried and it didn't end well a few times. I don't remember it, you know, but that's, that, that's my most... Uh, I remember that uh, when I was, uh, when I think, when I was in the village, uh, I was two or three years old, uh, I, uh, my mother, we would play school with my mother, and uh, uh, she would tell me, what, uh, what subject do you want to... Um, uh, uh, Discuss today, Papa Dimitriou, and uh, I would say uh, uh, arithmetic lines, by which I meant geometry. You know, I thought that that was the most amazing, uh, uh, most amazing uh, concept in the world, that you can have lines that were in some sense rigorous, had meaning, had had sort of you know some deeper mathematical meaning. And uh, 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 so, arithmetic lines was my favorite subject. I mean, it's it's it was. So my, my troubles with math stopped when we did the Euclidean geometry. So, you know, at, at, uh, at um, uh, like uh, eighth grade. Uh, and, uh, uh, and sort of, you know, I, I, I started reading further books. I started reading the Jesuits. Uh, uh, I started w worried about, worrying about other things and so on. So uh, for the first time we talk uh, math with my father. Uh, uh, when he was very sick and uh, uh, close to death, uh, and it was uh, it was a uh, it was uh, a moment um, uh, because uh, it became apparent to both of us that uh, uh, I was a better mathematician and he was a pupil and he was asking me questions uh, and I was trying to be. Uh, uh, Understand, understandable and, 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 and instructive. Yeah, so, um, uh, my father died when I was 20. Uh, by then I was at the university. I had, uh, I had um, you know, I had done very well in the entrance exams. Uh, uh, I was not number one in the entrance exams, okay, you know, which was sort of a uh, it was a surprise for, 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 for my year in class. And the reason is that uh, we had to write an essay. And uh, 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 the subject was uh, something about conversation. And uh, uh, I talk about, uh, in, you know, part of my essay, so a small part of my essay was about uh, dialectic and what it is dialectic in philosophy and, and, you know, and, and so on. And uh, uh, I had not realized that uh, two months before the exam, uh, 
uh, fascist uh, government had been, you know, that, that a dictatorship had taken over. And um, uh, the exam would be graded by sort of uh, very conservative uh, uh, teachers. And uh, so I get um, uh, sort of a really terrible grade, like 50% 50, 50 in 55% in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, essay, in the essay. And uh, this made me number nine, so you know, in, in overall. So in otherwise, I would be, I would be number one. And this, uh, uh, this was a wake up call for me. So you know that, uh, that uh, and uh, more than a wake up call, uh, it was also my first disappointment. Uh, I, uh, my other disappointment is that uh, for various reasons, I had chosen to become an electrical engineer. The only reason why I, I did that is because uh, uh, everybody was telling me, uh, you are good in math, and the people who are good in math, they study electrical engineering. That's actually true. Uh, the, that department, the uh, electrical engineering uh, department of, uh, it was actually called mechanical and electrical engineering department of Athens Polytechnic, was, uh, you know, all great Greek mathematicians and theoretical physicists came from that department. Uh, so it was considered the top school in Athens? It was the top, it was the top school in Greece, yeah. It was, it was the top school in Greece. But I didn't like electrical engineering. I mean, you know, I, I didn't like engineering. Uh, uh, my second, uh, you know, my se everybody would say first electrical, my electrical mechanical, second civil, third chemical. Okay, I my second choice was uh, mathematics, uh, mathematics in Athens, mathematics in Thessaloniki, and so on. You know, so uh, I, <coughs> but I got I took I got my first choice, and uh, that was uh, that was my second disappointment. You know, I. I um, uh, it didn't go down well. Uh, there were some subjects like inf information theory and control theory that then were pioneering subjects. So it was it was close to when they were uh, uh, being articulated these disciplines, uh, and uh, uh, I was I was uh, uh, I was interested in those subjects but only as uh, surrogates of what I wanted to do. And I didn't know it by then, but what I wanted to do was CA, computer science. Uh, I wanted to understand, to, to think about computation. Here's what I would like to hear on top of yeah, that. Yeah. First encounter with computing, uh, how, uh, how, was, uh, how was knowledge uh, disseminated at that period? Because like, information theory was a young field and yeah. it already reached uh, Greece. So it's interesting yeah. to yeah. hear. Right, it was not like today. So right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so um, control theory, information theory. Uh, these subjects I liked, uh, but I saw them uh, as uh, very interesting uh, flashes in the distant horizon uh, that showed me that. Uh, there is light somewhere, okay, you know, so, so uh, uh, I think that since then I was, uh, I was longing to understand computation. Uh, I was, uh, uh, they were taught to us uh, by, frankly, uh, mediocre professors. Uh, I didn't, you know, I remember uh, looking at my professors throughout my, my studies and thinking, uh, I'm about ten, smarter, 10 times smarter than this guy, but of course I will never become a professor. You know, that it, it was, it was uh, the way uh, one grew up in Greece then. Okay. It's because of the regime or because of the hierarchy? It was because of the regime, because uh, I was, uh, you know, to become anything you have to, you have, to uh, have witness that you belong to the right. You know. So, um, uh, also, uh, Professorships were essentially hereditary, usually through the son-in-law. Okay, you know. So, so, but, but, uh, but, uh, um, it was like a corrupt uh, to the bone uh, thing. Okay, so, um, uh, uh, 
so I'm jumping now several decades ahead uh, to just understand what what is what is uh, what is uh, uh, what was the academic uh, situation in Greece at that time. Uh, uh, I mean, in the 19, uh, late 1970s, um, that university elected me as professor, and I was about I was about to to go back to leave my job at MIT and go back and teach. Uh, and uh, I was consulting at Bell Labs, and uh, at some point I went late for lunch, and uh, an old man came uh, and sat next to me, and I said, "Oh my God, that's that's uh, Erdős Pál, that's uh, that's uh, Erdős." Uh, and uh, he told me, he said, "You are at MIT now," and uh, I told him, "Yes, yes, uh, but." Uh, I'm thinking of going back and teaching Greece. And then, so, you know, he nodded his head, he ate his lunch, and then he asked me, which university are you going to in Greece? The one that kicked out Papa Kyriakopoulos or the one that kicked out Kara Theodori? Okay, so basically, the two greatest mathematicians of the 20th century had returned to Greece, and, uh, and for various reasons, political reasons in both cases, uh, Papa Kyriakopoulos was a friend of... Uh, uh, the, the liberal uh, uh, leader of the time, Venizelos, you know, so, so you know, the very, very important uh, Greek politician, but sort of you know, on the anti-royal uh, Republican side. Uh, and uh, uh, Papa Kyriakopoulos was, uh, was uh, a one of the greatest topologists of, of, of 20th century, uh, who was uh, chased away for political reasons, you know, because he was on the left and went to Princeton, where he, uh, uh, where he told, where he, he didn't teach, but but he was a professor for a long time. Yeah, so, uh, and uh, uh, it turns out that. Uh, I ended up being chased, being, being chased, being chased away uh, from uh, from Greece. Also, not exactly for political reasons, for um, uh, political in a much more mundane sense. Uh, I was uh, it was too early for computer science in Greece. Okay, so yeah. let's go back to the sixties. Right, right. uh, yeah, and then uh, the first yeah. So the first encounter with the. The computer, computer yeah, right, right. and then we look chronologically through the 70s and then right, right. Uh, in one you know probably the best thing that happened to me in that university because I did not like the subjects uh, I was uh, uh, I, f I finished uh, something like uh, uh, 10th or 20th in my class okay so you know I was uh, uh, I was uh, I was, you know, I could not do worse, you know, so, so, but I did as, bad, as, as badly as I, as, as I could, uh, so, you know, uh, uh, I did not attend any classes, uh, so, you know, I studied for a weekend before the exams and so on, you know, I was doing other things, uh, uh, but uh, uh, that university gave me my first encounter with the computer, uh, I was, uh, it was a, a um, IBM, 1640, I believe. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's that's the model number. Uh, uh, it was a huge room, <laughs> and uh, but I, I befriended the uh, the operators, uh, and I um, uh, once in a while the, I would slip them a, a deck of cards and get the printout. Okay, so so uh, 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 when I was in the, in the third uh, year of of school. Uh, just uh, sort of, you know, I was I was obsessed with the distribution of primes, and 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 uh, I discovered the prime number theorem. Uh, uh, I uh, I provided a heuristic proof, so you know, I, I that, that 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 the that the distribution is one over log n, so you know, knowing nothing, so you know, sort of, I I wrote a, a heuristic differential equation. Uh, this I in this is uh, I I. I ended up that publishing it because because I, I put it as a as a as an exercise in my in my complexity book. Okay, you know, so so how to uh, so uh, and uh, uh, I went to all mathematicians in my in my university and told them about this uh, interesting fact that I discovered, 
and none of them knew the, the prime number theorem. So, um, uh, <laughs> um, how did you? Uh, so I, I I went to the library. I picked up a text in number theory, and so you know, in chapter four, it was the prime number theory. Okay, so so that that was. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, when I say library, uh, I did not have a library, you know, so I did not have access to it and it was and the, the, my school's library was was uh, 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 was uh, 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 Terrible shape it, it, it was it was very poor uh, but uh, there was the American library uh, and uh, uh, I would I would get all my scientific information from it. I mean, it was I assume a very mediocre library, but it was better than better best li better library than I had. Before I I I, I, I first met the computer, uh, and uh, I the very few people who understood uh, that I was I was uh, I was uh, good in in math and science, uh, they were telling me you you know. Your destiny is to become a nuclear scientist, uh, and uh, I had uh, uh, I was paying attention to physics. I had sort of uh, internalized it a little, but uh, when uh, when I saw the computer, when I saw that uh, huge room with blinking lights, uh, uh, when I uh, realized that I can learn this new language, okay, so you know it's. Uh, it really impressed me. It, it was uh, basically, uh, I, I remember telling my friends who had never heard of that. Uh, it's a language where you have to explain everything. I mean, you have to explain details that you didn't know exist. Okay, imagine you are telling a story. Okay, sort of, you know, and and, and uh, but I mean, oh, this person has never lived. Okay, you know, and and, and uh, you say and they ask you floors. I mean, oh, you have what is a floor? Okay, you know, and. and you know, you, ca you cannot, you have to explain everything with precise detail. And uh, then my friends would say, I mean, you know, but isn't this annoying? I said, yeah, but you understand the story much better, so much better, you know, so, uh, and, and, uh, um, uh, so I, I, I knew, I mean, no, I think, you know, Don Knuth says that uh, our tribe existed forever. Okay, but who knows what kind of mind games we played? Okay, Bef before before the computer. Okay, we have been waiting for thousands of years for the computer to be invented. Okay, and I think that some of us are basically born to be that, and 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 uh, and we are lucky that we were not born a hundred years ago. Okay, so that's um, uh, so um, I. Um, uh, it was the most primitive computer you can imagine. If you believe that, it was a decimal computer. Okay, so every every, every four bits, it was it was it was a decimal number. Uh, so uh, uh, and uh, and uh, of course I learned Fortran because that's that's uh, 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 perennial language. Uh, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was uh, it was the only fascination I had, you know, the only fascination I had with science and and and, and intellect uh, those days. Okay, so you know, I was uh, I was into uh, essentially partying, gambling, uh, other things. Okay, so uh, tell me about the gambling and the partying. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, yes. Are you sure? So yes, so yes. so you know, I, I you know, right after my father died, I I, I spent uh, 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 a year. So you know, completely dropping out. Uh, I um, I was uh, staying with uh, uh, two other gamblers, and so you know, we would, would uh, wake up, start uh, start with bagamon, go on to canasta, uh, so in kunkan, and other, and, other, you know, and then and then end up uh, with uh, with uh, poker, you know. So um, uh, and. Um, uh, that's you know there are many things I regretted in my life. This was this was an exciting uh, you know this was an exciting year. Okay, you know so that's um, uh, uh, and uh, um, it was also 
the richest year of my life. You know, I met him for money. <laughs> so, uh, but. Um, uh, uh, so, what made you quit? Okay, uh, you want to hear that story? Okay, so uh, uh, when um, uh, when I finished uh, uh, my my university, uh, uh, I have to go back and tell you my encounter with, with uh, touring. But uh, when I finished the university, I um, uh, uh, I had no choice but to go to to the military service. Uh, all these years, uh, Greece was under a dictatorship. Uh, it was uh, a lot of the strange things that I did those years was escaping that fact. Uh, I, uh, it sort of, it ate away my youth. You know, I, I, I'm not a hateful person, but I hate, you know, I hated these people more than, you know, I had, I had dreams of, uh, Waking uh, and somehow uh, dreams of violence. Okay, so you know, wait, waking up and finding myself in front of a of machine gun, and these people walking sort of you know uh, back and forth. And I said, Oh my God, that's 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 the likest thing. Okay, you know. So uh, I um, uh, I uh, uh, a lot of my friends were in the resistance. Uh, and I was not. Uh, some of the most uh, uh, traumatic memories from that time were my friends, some of them died, uh, uh, arranging an appointment because they knew what I was thinking, arranging an appointment with me uh, in order to recruit me, and uh, me playing uh, stupid, playing uh, uh, you know, not understanding what's going on. Okay, so um, uh, why didn't you want? You said yesterday you said you're a very political person. I'm a very political but person. But initially you were not. You were not even aware that the fascist put you ninth or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. when did? So uh, I had not. I was, you know, that was and that was naivete. You know, I was I was already political. I, you know, so I I should I can I can tell you uh, uh, in during my adolescence. I became religious uh, when I was 13 or 14. I, I became uh, very religious. And also, my, I told you my father was a labor leader and also fought in the civil war. He was a right-wing labor leader. A right-wing, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. And, that's and uh, he, fought, he fought in the civil war. He was very prominent, but on the right side. Mm. Not the fascist side, the sort of the Republican democratic side, but anti-communist. Okay, so, uh, and uh, uh, my mother's family was the opposite, and uh, her brothers were sort of, you know, in jail and so on, you know, so, so uh, uh, and uh, this was, this conflict, this was inside me. Uh, as I told you, I became very religious. I, I have read uh, all the Bible, you know, I can recite, you know, from the 70s uh, translation, so I can, I, can, I can recite long passages from the Bible. Uh, uh, Do you, can you think of a passage that is relevant to computing? And you can uh, <laughs> my God, yeah, no, no, no. no. Uh, I, you know, the, 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 the passage that I, li that I loved was... Uh, you can say it in, in Greek, of course. Yeah, 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 you know, was... Uh, uh, Asomen to Kirio and doxos garde doxaste, which means let us sing, let us sing to the to the Lord, because uh, he has been glorified gloriously. Uh, this is the prayer that the Jews uh, said uh, when they crossed after they crossed the Red Sea. Yeah, so so you know, I, so this was this you know, it's it's something that no other Greek knows, you know, but but I thought that it was you know one of the most beautiful poems. Uh, the, uh, that I have read. So in in many, I hope it's the same in Hebrew. Okay, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> I hope they didn't take liberties the seventy. Okay, <laughs> so um, uh, so um, uh, uh, and and uh, then I uh, when I was when I was uh, when I was sixteen, uh, I became member of the right wing youth. Uh, 
okay, uh, of the democratic right wing uh, 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 Karamanlis. Okay, you know, so I was I was I was a member of uh, of that of that um, right wing party, uh, and then uh, I read about. Willy Brandt, uh, who was a socialist uh, mayor of Berlin, and uh, uh, I heard him speak, I, I read his speeches, and uh, I said, uh, okay, this guy, you know, I, I like this guy, uh, which was, uh, back then, it was like an incredible jump. So you went from one extreme to the other? I, that was not an extreme for me, okay? <laughs> so okay. I went much further, okay, with the extreme, okay, later, when I, when I, when I, when I became 20. But, uh, but uh, uh, for some reason, I was, uh, first of all, I was undecided between, between uh, you know, after, after Willy Brandt, and, uh, and so, you know, I, I moved further to the left, but I didn't quite like any particular, you know, so, so, I, so I decided to be left of my own. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, all my friends, they were very, I mean, the, one, you know, the ones who were, many of them were very dogmatic, and so, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to talk about, about politics. The others were, dogmatically anti-dogmatic so you know and uh, you know and 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 uh, sort of you know it, I could not uh, I could not uh, you know and some others that were sort of you know in ridiculous uh, you know had their ridiculous position so you know that uh, and I could not put myself anywhere there okay so you know and this this continued throughout my life Throughout your life, also in the professional life? Uh, no no in in political, in political, life. political life so you know I uh, I decided that, uh, and then the people who tried to recruit me, you know, uh, they were telling me, "Come with us, don't go with them." Okay, you know. So, so, and and uh, and I, you know, I, I didn't want to think about it. I mean, sort of, you know, it it, it was important to me, but somehow, sort of, you know, I, I I could not see an easy solution. I remember, I remember, sort of, you know, I, uh, the easy way would be to become communist, but when I was uh, 19. Uh, the Soviet tanks went into uh, into Czechoslovakia. You know, if there was anybody that I liked in the left, that was Dubček, the the, the leader uh, the leader of uh, Czechoslovakia. And uh, I, uh, when this happened, I said, okay, you know, I'm, I'm an enemy of these guys. Okay, so. Uh, so. Uh, so I ended, ended up being with no home. Which is actually the best, the, the best way to be. No political home. No, no. Or no you know, I had an ideological home, so mm -hmm. you know, but 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 not a not a not a tangible political home, which was fine by me. When I went to uh, uh, to the army, I was in debt. Okay, so I owned my friend uh, some like uh, three hundred dollars, but it was. An incredible amount of money for that part time, okay, for me at that time. So it was I could not sleep. I had a terrible time in the in the army. Uh, I uh, I think I was the only period of my life when I was this depressed. Uh, the uh, uh, can you believe this? I lost eight teeth in the army. So so I mean, no, I think this is this is. Uh, you know, they tell me this is extreme depression. Okay, mm -hmm. so you know, I mean, no, four of them were wisdom teeth, but the four of, four of them were not. Okay, you know, so so uh, so it was. You know, also they gave us terrible food, and uh, I didn't, I didn't, I, 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 I was not paying attention to hygiene. You know, so so that's um, uh, all of these things together. Uh, it was the most. It was the most terrible time of my life. Uh, I. Uh, uh, and on top of that, I was uh, I was uh, I was in debt. Okay, so you know, and there was no way that I could I could I could get money. I could I could work because because I was in the army. So uh, in the army, it's not like Israel. You know, in the army, you live in the barracks. 
sort of, you know, and if you are lucky, you can get, uh, you can get a few hours uh, uh, out in the town. Uh, so, I, um, uh, then uh, Christmas came, and uh, my friends who were, who were, uh, who were uh, officers invited me, you know, at Christmas everybody in Greece gambles, okay, so, you know, I was gambled all the previous year, but, but I mean, at Christmas, you know, in Greece everybody got gambled. And uh, so my, my friends who were officers invited me to their table. And uh, uh, so, you know, the, uh, the January 1st, so, you know, the dawn of January 1st of, of, of uh, 1973, uh, 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 I... Uh, I found myself a rich man. I had I had won a thousand dollars. Okay, you know. So uh, what I did is uh, I took a taxi and I went to the best restaurant in the town where I was. It was Patras, which was uh, overlooking, uh, you know, in a high hill overlooking the town and and, and the sea. And then I had I had a great meal, and uh, uh, I decided that I would quit. Uh, I would quit. I would become a scientist. Uh, I would quit gambling. Uh, and uh, and I kept this for the longest time. Okay, uh, what happened? Like twenty something years later, there was a conference in, in Las Vegas. Okay, so uh, uh, I went there. Uh, two amazing things happened to me. One is uh, I met a guy who looked at me, and I looked at him, and uh, he was the the son of the blacksmith. Of Lidoriki, the uh, the village I was I was uh, raised from, I was raised in, and uh, my family was renting the second floor of their house, so we grew up together, and uh, I was a professor of computer science at Berkeley, he was a professor of computer science at the State University of the next state of Nevada, and we had not had completely lost. Uh, I think he knew about me, so you know, but I had no idea that he was in Las Vegas. Okay, so so that was that was an, uh, that was a very interesting encounter. The second one was uh, uh, that uh, uh, after the conference was over, I had uh, I had a couple of hours before my flight, and they told me there is a poker game, and uh, uh, I said, okay, why don't I sit there for a couple of hours? Okay, so you know, uh, I have held my 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 vow until now, so um, I have been good. Uh, and uh, uh, then the result was is that uh, I stayed there for 24 hours on the table, so you know, and, and, and then I flew away. Okay, you know, but and uh, and um, so that was, uh, but but I stopped there. Okay, <laughs> I didn't go back. Why did I win? W you know, was 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 it? Uh, I think I understood probability better than uh, my opponents, uh, uh, but. I think that's a small part of, of, of why you win in poker. Yeah, so um, uh, uh, you, um, uh, you, I mean, you don't get the money. Your opponent gives you the money. Okay, so that's uh, okay. Computing, and and uh, right. you move to the U.S. So yeah, 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 yeah. So so, so uh, uh, when I was, you know, so. Uh, one one thing that I liked one the only course that I really identified with uh, in uh, in um, uh, in uh, my undergraduate studies was operations research. You know, I uh, I learned about linear programming. I read a couple of things, and I said, okay, that's that's something I can identify with. Can you tell us what you thought when you saw linear programming? For the uh, <laughs> uh, Yes, I mean, no, I... Uh, Can you describe to the public what linear programming yes, is? Yes, 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 right, yeah, yeah. So, um, linear programming is, uh, is uh, essentially, it's, it's an optimization technique, but it's so much more than that. Uh, uh, John von Neumann discovered it in, uh, in the 1920s in order to understand behavior, to understand gambling, to understand poker. I mean, no, the, the story is that, uh, that uh, Johnny was, uh, was a terrible gambler, and uh, that's why he decided to study poker. And uh, uh, the Max Min theorem, that essentially says that uh, that uh, that uh, any game where uh, there is no win-win or lose-lose, uh, it has 
a particular value. If they both play perfectly, you know exactly what's going to happen. Okay. So, uh, and poker is such a game. Uh, but of course, only now computers have been able to finally uh, uh, play better than humans, and also only in one-on-one one, one -on -one games. Uh, but uh, but uh, so then, uh, in uh, right uh, during the war, uh, uh, George Danzig uh, rediscovered it, and Kantorovic in the Soviet Union, and Kopmans uh, also. So you know. Uh, they discovered it for uh, logistics. Uh, you know, the war effort required the coordination of, 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 of uh, a lot of uh, various things, and to do it optimally, you start writing equations, and soon you arrive at uh, this thing called linear programming. Okay. Linear means that the equations are not quadratic, okay? They're, they're linear, because if they were quadratic, we wouldn't know, we know how to do it. Uh, the, you know, the story is that uh, when uh, Danzig presented his, uh, uh, his uh, work uh, to von Neumann, he realized that von Neumann knew all about it. Uh, but he never bothered to uh, articulate the optimization uh, uh, aspect of this, of, of this knowledge. Uh, also, when he presented to the public, uh, everybody scolded him. Uh, uh, you know, the quote from there is, uh, the world is not linear, George. Okay, so, uh, and uh, this is uh, a very interesting point. I mean, oh, the, the, the person who scolded, uh, who, who, who uh, uh, was sarcastic, uh, with the, this sarcastic response to George Danzig, uh, is very accurate, okay? The world is not linear. But uh, it, the story, you know, the triumph of linear programming, because it's one of the, one of the uh, greatest computational methods uh, uh, of the 20th century, uh, if not the greatest, you know, with, uh, with the Fourier transform, uh, uh, tells us that uh, if you have a good technique that approximates the world, that's better than having an accurate model of the world and not knowing what to do with it. Okay, so. Okay, but tell us now about your own personal, not about Danzig. Yeah. Uh, right. So, uh, yes, when I, first, uh, when I first understood linear programming, I thought that, that, that uh, this was uh, uh, very sophisticated, very clever, and also very simple. So, so, so I, could, I, could, I could, you know, uh, I could feel it. I could live it. I programmed it. Okay, so, you know, I have, I have written my own linear programming code because, so, you know, we didn't, we didn't have libraries back then. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, still I was not quite, quite interested, right? I mean, then there was, we had, we, had a, we had a strange course on pattern recognition, which, so, you know, taught by somebody I did not respect. But uh, uh, this led me to, you know, I got a book on pattern recognition. And uh, on, on a couple of pages, he talked, ab he talked about the Turing machine. And uh, this left me dumbfounded. I saw that for the first time uh, something that spoke directly to me. You know, basically, what is computation? I had no idea that this, was, this had been around for, for 40 years, okay? So, you know, so... Uh, uh, I remember my excitement, sort of, you know, I could not sleep, I could not think. I mean, uh, I remember uh, going to, uh, you know, before I went, of course, to, to the American Library and, and got, uh, got a little more information. But before that, I remember uh, uh, looking in my uh, Greek in English Greek dictionary, the verb to ture. What does it mean to ture? What is a Turing machine? I know what a washing machine is, I, you know, but, but so, um, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, so, from uh, the little pieces that I could gather, I thought that this was the most amazing thing in the world. Okay, you know, so, so uh, I, uh, uh, well, after, uh, you know, during my military service, uh, I, um, uh, I, uh, uh, 
I decided that, uh, you know, in the army, I saw the hell of the dictatorship. Uh, I also I saw the stupidity, the, uh, the uh, incompetence, the, uh, the complete, uh, uh, the complete uh, uh, ignorance and, 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 and uh, disinterest in, in uh, how people live. In, live, in Greece, live, you know. So, so it was. It, you know, it was. Uh, you know, there was. There was a. There was a. Uh, there was a military um, arrogance. So, you know that that uh, that uh, uh, made me. Uh, you know, made me both very. You know, very. You know, a condescension. So, you know, for, for everybody else. You know that that uh, uh, turned me off completely. And I decided I went out of here. Uh, back then, uh, and one of the reasons why I was not interested in the resistance was that uh, uh, I was thinking that uh, Franco lasted 40 years, Papadopoulos will last 80. Okay, you know, so I better I better get out of here. Uh, so, and uh, so I applied for graduate school. Uh, and uh, I applied, of course, to electrical engineering because that was my, and I had no idea that you can do something else than what you have studied. And uh, the only, the only universities that accepted my application uh, were Princeton and Carnegie Mellon. Uh, and Princeton, they had sort of you know a little strange sentence which I didn't understand, which said that we all, you know, uh, basically. The sentence said, uh, "We are not exactly sure what you are talking about in your in your application letter, but we have put you in the computer science group." I didn't pay attention to that. Okay, so I was I was trying to decide between Carnegie Mellon and Princeton. I knew that Einstein was at Princeton; that was a plus. Okay, you know, but other than that, Princeton and Carnegie Mellon they looked like two dots near New York. You know, so so um, I and I couldn't decide. Sort of little funny stupid story. Uh, I, um, one day I receive a letter from Carnegie Mellon and the letter essentially says, uh, congratulations for being admitted to Carnegie Mellon. We want you to come here. You have probably have heard that, that Pittsburgh is ugly and gloomy and, and it <laughs> snows all the time. That's lies. Okay. So, you know, Pittsburgh is a very important and interesting city and so on. So I read this. I said, "Okay, thank you very much. You got you, you gave me a lot of information." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Pittsburgh is now, of course, a fantastic city, but uh, but uh, but uh, back then it had this reputation, okay, which I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like when a country is called Democratic Republic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You you should immediately pay attention. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So. Uh, um, and uh, uh, so I went to Princeton. Uh, as I told you, uh, essentially I came I came to the United States as a as a political refugee. Uh, I you know I I wanted to get out of Greece. Uh, I of course I was in a good department with a good you know but and I, I registered and I took my classes uh, and I had a TA ship you know so uh, but. Uh, my main, my main mission, I thought, was to look around and see what I'm going to do in this new land. Okay, you know, so, so. Um, do you have any particular story that uh, demonstrates the transition? Uh, how many stories do you want? One, right. I mean, one, so, so one, one, one. Big one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I was looking around. I was, I was, I was, uh, uh, I was going to Astoria, connected with Greek Americans, uh, sort of, you know, asking what businesses there are around. What you know? What can I, what can I do? What and and I was registered at the same time at Princeton. And uh, one of my courses was automata theory, which essentially is the legacy of, of Turing, the Turing machine of, of Alan Turing. And uh, uh, I uh, 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 I suddenly realized that this is what I was dreaming about. Uh, this was the field I was dreaming about, and uh, also that I was the, for the first time in my life, I was 
really like the best, you know, the, the top student in the class. Okay, so you know, I was really very good at it. Uh, and also, that was, I mean, I feel that I had spent my undergraduate years. Uh, in some sense, I, I passed throughout the, my undergraduate years. Okay, so, you know, I did not participate. I, I, I never studied. And so this was the first time I, I studied something. And uh, uh, I remember, so, you know, by, by that time, I didn't have much to do with God, but I remember thanking somebody for uh, that, that this discipline existed. Okay, so, you know, that it seemed to me so improbable. It seemed to me miraculous. Okay, it seemed to be that, that how can it be? How can it be that something that I had been dreaming about, something that I had been trying to force into existence, was right there? Okay, so, you know, and, and there was a textbook and there were people teaching it. Okay, you know, so I, I thought it was, it was... Uh, you already uh, felt a member of the tribe? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Already yeah, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, an incredibly uh, uh, exciting time. Uh, I mean, no, I said in my talk, so, you know, some amazing things had happened. I mean, no, that's, that was, that was Cook, uh, Cook Levin Carp and uh, Strassen. Okay, so... And this was before you... What year did you move? Uh, 1973. 1973. So yeah. It was so, so it was it, it was the it was the beginning of time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. In my third year, I, I, I finished in three years, uh, but uh, in the th during the third year, I met Michalis Yanakakis, who basically uh, was uh, the most important scientific encounter of my life. Yeah. So uh, uh, we, uh, I remember uh, spending my whole third year trying to convince me him to do computer science. He wanted to do information theory, communication theory. Uh, and uh, in the end, I mean, no, he's, he's, a very, he's a very stubborn and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, difficult to move uh, person. Okay, so, so uh, in the end, I was so disappointed, I was, I gave up. And uh, uh, next year, I, I had started as assistant professor at Harvard. And he gave me a call and he told me, you know what, I'm, I'm working on computer science. And I remember right after this, um, this uh, telephone call, I told myself, even if I do nothing else for computer science, today I have accomplished a lot. Okay, so... <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, we worked together with this guy for a very long time, uh, for the next uh, maybe 20 years. Uh, and... Uh, it's a very unique relationship. Uh, uh, probably half of my ten best papers are with him, and something similar with his best ten papers. Okay, you know, so so um, that's very rare. That's very rare. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, Can you describe us a bit more about this uh, collaboration? How it worked? Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Um, and what yeah, do you yeah. work on? Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, for the general topic. So basically, basically, uh, basically, I'm going to repeat myself from 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 my lecture. But uh, sorry, no. The, ah, okay. yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, more, yeah, yeah, more okay, popular. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so I can tell you this: that uh, after uh, after uh, uh, we worked for a long time together, and uh, then uh, things changed. He left Bell Labs, where I would meet him. Uh, he first came to Stam went to Stanford, then went to Columbia, and so we stopped working together. And uh, uh, then he invited me uh, uh, to give a, a talk at Columbia. And uh, it was a busy day for me in New York and I only have a, a half an hour to talk to him. And during this half hour that we stayed together for after 10 years, uh, we wrote a very nice paper. And uh, it's, uh, you know, I think this uh, tells volumes about me and Michalis, right? I mean, you know, I, we, have, uh, we have sort of a unique bandwidth, you know, that, that uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, we complete each other's sentences, we complete each other's lemmas and theorems. Uh, and so, you know, I think that uh, that paper that we wrote, you know, that paper, you know, it was 
published in PNAS. It's, it's, a, nice, it's a nice theorem about, about, about markets. But uh, uh, other people who would have proved it, okay? I don't think that anybody could prove it in half an hour, okay? You know, that, it, that only to the two of us, okay? Neither of us could only, you know, I think we are the only people in the world who would have done it, you know, with such, such a uh, 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 seamless, uh, elegant, effortless way. Yeah, could, so could this happen with somebody who is not your compatriot? Uh, uh, I wonder. I often wonder. Okay, so with Michalis, we, he, we went to the same high school, we went to the same university. So um, he, uh, but I, he knew about me because I was two years ahead of him. I didn't know about him. Uh, so we met at Princeton. Uh, uh, we share a lot of things. I mean, also we, we, we there are no words are needed in our communication. You know, the, uh, uh, a year and a half ago, I moved, I moved to Colombia from Berkeley. And uh, one of the big reasons I moved to Colombia is that Michalis is a professor there. Uh, uh, our offices are um, uh, two meters from each other. Okay, so, so uh, I have, uh, have a sticker on my door saying, uh, uh, if, uh, if uh, knock, and if I'm not here, knock the door behind you. Okay, yeah, so. Um, uh, closure for you to. Uh, yes, 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 yeah, in a big way. The, suddenly we had discovered that uh, computation is, uh, is uh, uh, powerful and that computation has limits. And not the limits that Turing told us about, or Gödel, but uh, real limits that hurt you. Okay, that 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 uh, that that, uh, that uh, limit your ambitions to do something. Okay, to do something practical. And uh, this was uh, also Strassen, a general mathematician, who in, at Berkeley discovered uh, an algorithm for multiplying matrices. Okay, the most basic uh, uh, problem in the world. Uh, faster than what everybody else believed was, was the, the only possible algorithm. Uh, suddenly we, we discovered that there is a lot of sophistication in algorithms. And, uh, and uh, what seem obstacles, because n cubed for matrix multiplication was considered a very natural obstacle to many people, may not be obstacle. Okay, so, so that's, uh, and that we need very sophisticated mathematics to, uh, to, uh, uh, to prove that something is, is, uh, is, uh, is difficult. Because basically, uh, what the whole business is about is, uh, is uh, solving problems on the computer as quickly as possible. But, I mean, you know, the, all the problem comes, what happens when uh, you put your head down, you ask your friends, you ask somebody more clever than you, and still you cannot solve it any faster. Uh, is it because we are all stupid, or is it because the problem is uh, very difficult? Okay, so, and if the problem is difficult, can you hope to prove it, that it's difficult? So that, this was a challenge. Uh, now we know that it is, uh, it is uh, a problem harder than life, okay? But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, uh, back then, we were naive, okay? So we, we marched ahead. I mean, I have spent a semester working on the P versus MP problem. Okay, that was my first, my first semester at Harvard. Can you describe the P versus MP problem to the general public in your words? Sure, 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 yeah, yeah. So, uh, what I'm telling my students that computer scientists should be proud for their accomplishments, okay? But if they are very persistent, ask me, okay, what accomplishment, okay? I, I think that there is one, th one, one question that, that, uh, that uh, I mean, physicists have articulated the question, uh, is there a single equation that describes the universe? Biologists, how did life start? In neuroscience, which is my current interest, we are trying to think how the brain works. Okay, so these are questions that are of uh, pan-human interest. Okay, I mean, you, know, you don't have to be a specialist to understand why this question is, 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 is uh, important, right? I mean, you know, you know, suppose that we live, that, that, that we are 
we become wiser than we are and we are able to continue life on this planet for another million years. If we don't answer these questions, what's the point? What's the point? Why, 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 why be around? Okay? So, what I want to say is that computer science has articulated such a question. Okay, that I really believe it's one of the five. And uh, that question is, can exhaustive search always be avoided? When you are looking at, at when you are looking to find something, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it looks hard. Okay? Sometimes it's a needle in a haystack. Can you always find the needle in the haystack? That's what is a P versus MP problem. Can give an example for exhaustive search. Uh, right. So, uh, over the past 50 years, uh, 55 years, perhaps the most amazing phenomenon, which is both technological, scientific, and social. Uh, that the world has noticed is the exponential growth of computation. Uh, it's so important and it has so much uh, seeped into our daily lives that now that Moore's law has finished, I mean, it's not clinically dead, but it's on life support. Okay, so, you know, it, it has been, you know, People are trying to pretend that it's not dead uh, by, by increasingly heroic efforts, okay? You know, so, but now that the Moore's law is, is ending, I have a fear that it's going to come as a shock to humanity uh, uh, unless very quickly remedies are found, okay? Other, other ways around it, okay? So this was done by chips, of course, okay? The chips became bigger and bigger and bigger and more, more and more powerful. Uh, now, these chips are manuf designed, manufactured, tested, and so on. Okay, so testing chips. Okay, here is a problem. In order to test chips, you have to uh, put, uh, uh, you have to try all possible binary inputs, all possible combinations of zeros and ones on their pins and see if they do what they're supposed to do. And basically, the only way to do it, we know how to do it, is exhaustively. Okay? We have developed very clever methods since then, right? I mean, but in the beginning, only exhaustively we, could, we, we knew how to test it, test ch the chip. And it turns out that it's a law of universe that exhaustively you cannot test chips that have more than 200 pins. So there was CARP, there was Cook Levin, you came to Princeton. So basically, I'm part of the generation that uh, uh, struggled with understanding the limitations of exhaustive search and uh, tried to find its true limits uh, and tried to extend uh, the, the frameworks that, uh, that, that were given to us by, by Carp and Levin in order to create new uh, vistas, new ways of understanding computation and finding problems that can fit there. Uh, and uh, we were, I said this much better in my, in my talk, okay? So, you know, my generation felt that, that we were also uh, uh, the theoreticians of computer science, that we had to help our fellow computer scientists understand what, uh, uh, and understand the areas, okay, have attained a theoretical understanding of uh, what uh, they were studying, like, for example, databases, VLSI, chips, uh, uh, software engineering, uh, programming languages, uh, operating systems, distributed computation, scheduling. We considered it our job to uh, uh, help them. Okay. And uh, it turns out that in do by doing this, we were recognizing more and more facets of computation and complexity. Uh, and uh, of course, the 
big break, many things happened, okay? The cryptography came. This is uh, something that, uh, that uh, is essentially an Israeli uh, affair. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a, one of the most fantastic uh, accomplishments of, uh, of computer science. Uh, for some reason, uh, I, it happened in the next office to me. I was at MIT when it happened, okay? And, uh, okay. and, uh, and uh, for some reason, I admired it, I fell in love with it, and then I said, that's something I'm not going to work on. Uh, and I kept, I kept this throughout, okay? Do you feel you've been missing out by not working on it? I think so, yeah. You know, if there is one, one, uh, one uh, decision I regret is this. You know, I, I felt very much at home with it. So, you know, I was, I was, I was very much interested in numbers, I was, you know, in number theory. I was, uh, but uh, I said, uh, for some reason, that's not for me. Okay, so for, uh, uh, for the first 20 years of my career, I was, uh, uh, a real, uh, a real nerd. Uh, so you know, I, I, I was a soldier of computer science. Okay, I, I wanted to help computer science become a mature field. Uh, I did it through theory, but perhaps uh, in my mind, the most important thing was to help uh, uh, practical computer scientists to get a better understanding of what they had to do. Um, and then, uh, so these first uh, these first years of computer science, computer scientists were obsessed with the computer. Okay, and uh, it's very hard. You know, you are a computer scientist. It's very hard in retrospect to to understand to 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 to, to explain why uh, such a large group of intelligent adults were obsessed with. Uh, this thing, right? <laughs> Actually, so, uh, I have this, uh, this tribe analogy is amazing to me. I, uh, <laughs> because there's something international about it. People, of course, of course. That's a very interesting aspect uh, that uh, I, I was thinking we need to touch. Uh, okay, okay, right. Yeah, so, so I mean, no, my point is that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, when uh, in 1994 it became clear that uh, the computer was nothing, okay? The computer was the gadget that brought us the internet. And uh, computer science is about the internet. And computer science studies the internet. And that's, that completely changed my perspective. It was also the time I moved to Berkeley. And uh, Berkeley is a campus that somehow gives you the freedom to think a little more broadly. Uh, gives you sort of a license. You know, that's, where, that's when I started also writing fiction. Uh, gives you sort of a license, you know, it's sort of some kind of a very extremely aggressive form of academic freedom. If it feels intellectual and it's sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's intellectual worthy, go ahead and do it, leave everything else and do it, okay? So then that's when I, try, I decided that I'm done with the computer, I want to think about the internet, I want to think about the new world and what it needs. And uh, that's when I started uh, uh, I had been working on economics before. That's one of, that was one of my, of my uh, I mean, you know, I, I was, uh, uh, I was, uh, uh, when I was at Stanford in the 1980s, I went, uh, you know, when I arrived there, I went to lunch with Kenneth Arrow, and, uh, who was my colleague, and uh, uh, in the operations research department, I was both in computer science and operations research, and uh, in, uh, you know, that's another, great friend I lost recently. Uh, and uh, uh, in the middle of our lunch, he gave, me a he gave me a paper and he told me, I think you should read this. And uh, I was almost ready to tell him, I'm not your graduate student buddy, okay, you know, but then I said, this is Canaro, let's, uh, let's see what he wants me to read. And that was uh, in some sense the perfect, you know, it hooked me into economics, you know, it was the perfect paper. It was uh, forward-looking, but um, uh, very poor. Mm. Okay, that so was 94? That, that was, that was uh, 84, 83. A 83. 83, okay, 83. good. 
I was okay. 83. Okay. So, and uh, from then on, I started working about working on economic concepts, equilibrium, and so on, trying to understand them from computer, computer science perspective. So tell us about this line of work of yours and uh, the, its title theory. Right, right. So then, uh, but I thought that, you know, I had, I had some very talented students work on this. We had, we had sort of the first papers in the interface between computer science and economics. But then the internet came and it made me think that the internet is unlike anything else we have designed, okay? Because uh, it has a mind of its own. It's about people. So incentives are very important. So in, immediately I realized that the time, the time for this to come to prime time had arrived. And, uh, and uh, 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 this is when uh, I started thinking that we have to develop a new computer science that uh, employs microeconomics, game theory, uh, the study of incentives, the mechanism design. And uh, uh, at the same time, Noam Nissan uh, from the Hebrew University had a sim very similar idea. Okay, so we, uh, uh, and now this is, this is a very flourishing field that, uh, that is, uh, you know, it has uh, three annual conferences, uh, two journals, and so on. You know, it's it's a, it's a it's a major it's a major thing. It's uh, it's one of the very important forward-looking voices in computer science. Okay, so you know, it's also the part of computer science that uh, uh, is most involved with the research on blockchain. Tell us about the blockchain. Uh, I want you to quote me from my from my from my talk yesterday, but basically I think that I think that that uh, uh, it's very okay. It's very hard to okay. One of the one of the things that I learned is that incredibly difficult to spot change. Okay, uh, uh, when I say spot change, I'll tell you the following story. That uh, that uh, uh, once uh, you know, okay, two stories. When I moved to Colombia. I looked at the books I had, okay, so you know which ones to throw away. And I noticed that in 1994, I had bought a book whose title is The Whole Internet. This made, this was, I find this humiliating, okay, that in 1994, I thought that, I, that it's worth buying a book that describes the whole internet, okay, you know, so, you know what I'm saying, you know, it's, it's, it's so short-sighted. I mean, of course, it's even more embarrassing for O'Reilly who published it, okay, you know, but, <laughs> but, uh, but it's, it, it's very, it's, you know, it's an, it's an embarrassment, okay? So, on the other end, right, I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, one day I met, I met a colleague at Berkeley and he showed me his flip phone and it had a camera. And he told me, our, our lives just changed, okay? This guy had seen Snapchat. That was that, that was that was Satish Rao. Okay, you know, you know what I'm saying. He had seen Facebook and Snapchat, uh, Snapchat. Okay, you know, so so that's uh, it, you know, it's it's uh, it, there is a talent. I mean, of, of seeing the change. I mean, you know, that's uh, it's it's important. You know, it's it's uh, one of the hardest things. Okay, so I feel that the internet is going to change. And uh, when I see around, I see what is what is the new algorithmic framework that uh, that uh, that that can be the basis of this change uh, like tcp ip was for for the internet and http uh, i uh, i think that blockchain is a, is a good bet the last 20 years i've been i've been writing stories uh, and it started completely all of a sudden uh, Muli is the first person, Muli Safra is the only person, the first person who uh, 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 I dare to show him my writing, okay, you know. So, uh, uh, it started from overnight. Uh, before that, I had never written a short story or a poem. Uh, and uh, uh, it was 1997 and uh, I had seen a film uh, about my favorite poem poet, uh, Kavafi. Uh, so um, I liked it so and so, you know, the title of the film was Kavafi. But uh, uh, 
after the film, you know, in the, in the movie house, in the movie theater, I thought, what, a, what an interesting way to pay tribute to your intellectual hero, to have a work of art that bears his name. Uh, and then I said, I thought, oh my God, Turin. A novel named Turin. And uh, that night I couldn't sleep and I made up the plot. And the next two and a half years I wrote, uh, uh, I kept writing until it was done. And since then, I mean, oh, this is, this is, uh, uh, I believe sort of, you know, that I don't know what's more important for me, computer science or, you know, I know, I know that I'm, I know that, that I will never stop writing. It's impossible, you know, it's like a new dimension. I mean, no, it's, it's not like I would be half a man. I would be worse. I would be one dimension less. Okay. You know, so, so I, uh, I, uh, uh, it's, I cannot, you know, maybe, maybe some of you write. Okay. But I mean, you know, if you don't, uh, I cannot describe to you what is, wh how, what an all-encompassing, uh, you know, it's very much like, I've never done it, but from the stories I've read and heard, it's very much like a spectacularly successful psychoanalysis. So basically you, you, find, your, you find things inside you that you didn't know exist, and moreover, you don't tell your analyst, you tell the whole world. Okay, so, you know, that's, that's another, uh, that, that's, uh, you know, it, it, it's like, uh, 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 being a statue in the middle of a town, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's deeply uh, personal, very, very personal, yeah. So, I mean, it's, you know, the image I have, you cry a lot, I mean, so I, uh, every time I write, I cry, I cry, you know, so, you know, it's, the, the image I have is putting your hand inside you and catching stuff that you put on the table and then you don't recognize them. Uh, and uh, 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 when, when I finished uh, writing, my publisher insisted that I meet uh, this Greek guy, Apostolos Doxiadis, who had written this uh, great uh, mathematical book, uh, Uncle Petros and Goldbach's Conjecture. So I met him, we had lunch, and during lunch we had a disagreement and debate about, the, about Gödel and Russell. And, uh, in the end of the lunch, we decided to write a book about it. And that's how Logic Comics was written. Enough, enough about fiction. Thank you, Christos. Thanks, man. Yeah.